Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Kirkley's Libraries Adventures Live. My name is Dinah, and I'm so excited to be here today. I've been hopping about eagerly, waiting for to meet today's special guests. Yep, that's right, not one guest, but two guests today. We're really lucky here. And I say hopping because our story today is about a little girl and a rabbit. Or is it a rabbit? We'll find out soon. But more about that in a moment. First of all, I want to ask, did you see last week's Library Adventures Live with Helen and Thomas Doherty? Helen's book, The Screen Thief, is beautifully illustrated by her husband. And The Screen Thief features the snaffle. And it's a fun picture book. The snaffle likes eating screens as a snack. Yes, the screens that we know as in phones and tablets, he eats them as a snack. Look out, she'll snaffle your screen if you're not careful. It's a gorgeous, warm, friendly, happy book and we've got lots of copies in our libraries. Last week also featured lots of drawing tips, how to draw your own snaffle and max. But don't worry if you missed it or any other of our Library Adventures Live you can watch them all, and I'll show you now. You can watch them all on our website on Kirkley's Libraries Adventures, Libraries, Kirkley's Libraries.co.uk. Okay, right. Are you ready to meet this week's guests? You are? I can't hear you. You are? Okay. Well, just before we do, a quick reminder that you can ask lots of questions. Um, by typing in the chat and our our um, visitors today will answer those questions. We love getting your questions. That's what makes our library adventures line exciting and fun. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the amazing Laura Mutcher, author of Rita's Rabbit. Ta -da! And the equally amazing illustrator and author, Hannah Peck. Here they come! Ta-da! Woohoo! Hi! <laughs> Hi! Welcome. Welcome! Welcome to Kirkley's Libraries Adventures Live. Thank you for having us. It's oh, so you're yeah. welcome. <laughs> Can I first ask, where are you coming from? Uh, oh, actually, I was going to say I'm in London, but I'm not. I normally live in London, but I'm currently in Worcestershire visiting my parents-in-law. Uh, hi, parents. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Mum and Dad. <laughs> and Hannah, where are you from? I actually am in London. And Laura, we live quite close to each other, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. A few roads oh. apart, but unfortunately not on holiday, just in my, my regular house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're really excited, everybody here at Kirkley's Library's, Library's Adventures Live, to meet Rita and her rabbit and hear all about the book. So, if I hop off <laughs> and bring you two on, would that be okay? Are you actually going to hop off? That's oh, that. yes. <laughs> hop off. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit and I'll come back for some questions, okay? Okay, brilliant. Here right, so I'm going to start, Hannah, by reading the story, and then I I'm going to. <laughs> I don't know if you've read it before. It's very good. And the illustrator did a great job, <laughs> and um, I'm going to then hand over to you to do some uh, to teach us all how to draw, and then maybe we'll answer some of the questions. So that I'm going to share really my. Good. Yeah, great. Um. Okay, so I should be sharing. I don't know why. Aha. Nope, here we go. Perfect. Hold on. Okay. So, can you now see the first page? Yes. Okay, I'm going to make my screen big so it's neat. Okay. So, that's where if you own a book, you can write your name so that no one steals it. And that's Spike, happily fast asleep. We'll meet him in a moment. So this is Rita, and this is Rita's bedroom. And I'd just like to talk about some of the decorations in her bedroom before we start reading the book. I really like her 
her like calendar where she's been crossing off her dates and there's a rabbit on her and then there's a rabbit poster and a rabbit drawing and I think there's a rabbit on her bed which is um has a rabbit blanket and a and a carrot duvet and then she's also got a rabbit picture sellotaped to the bottom of her bed frame she is drawing a rabbit she has rabbit ears on her outfit <laughs> She's got uh, rabbit slippers. She's got a rabbit book that's open. And she's been re writing some things. I'm going to read them. They say, Flopsy Hopsy, Bouncer Bugs, Fluff Ball Thumper, Mr. Hugs. And then she's been writing in her diary. And her diary says, Dear Diary, I wish I had a rabbit. Dear Diary, still no rabbit. And then finally, she's got um, some carrots hanging from the ceiling and a stick with a carrot attached to it, which is curious. So what does it say? It says, Rita wanted a rabbit. She really, really, really wanted a rabbit. And I think, based on uh, what we're seeing here, I'd agree with that statement. And now, finally, it was her birthday. She ran down the stairs, she ran past her birthday cake, and she ran up to the big box in the living room where her grandpa was waiting. <gasps> what a big box, what is in the box? Also, what lovely ribbons. And there are so many amazing balloons, and the candles on that cake are extraordinary. I feel like I need to, try and insist on more balloons and bigger cake for my next birthday. Surprise, he said. And it was a surprise because when Rita opened the box, she didn't find big floppy ears, a small fluffy tail and fabulously furry feet. Instead, it's a bearded dragon, said Grandpa. Oh, um, thank you, she said, trying to smile. Do you think she's doing a very good job at smiling? I mean, that doesn't look like a smile to me. Spike, on the other hand, is smiling in a hopeful way. But I wanted a rabbit! Ah! Oh dear, do you look like that when you throw a tiny little, tiny little bit of a tantrum? Because I think I look quite similar to that. And Spike was not a rabbit. He wasn't even close. He wasn't squidgy, splendid or soft. He was scaly, scary, scratchy, scrabbly, scrawny, speckled and spiky. Rita decided to ignore the dragon. There she is drawing some rabbits with her rabbit hood on. But that wasn't easy with all the hissing. Poor little Spike, look, he looks so sad. She tried to take him back to the pet shop, but it was closed. Poor little Spike. She tried to give them to the neighbours. Sorry, they said we don't have any room. So we don't have room for any more pets. Spike doesn't look sad anymore. He's starting to look a bit grumpy now, isn't he? And I'd just like to say that I absolutely love this spread because I really hope you can notice that there's a little bunny rabbit whose bottom is hanging off the back of the sofa. And there is also a rabbit playing a musical instrument that we can ask Hannah about later. And there are also some trampolining rabbits, which feels appropriate given that we are in the Olympics at the moment. Maybe they're Olympic rabbits. But I'd say on the whole, all these rabbits look very cute. It's so unfair, <laughs> said Rita. All I've ever wanted is a rabbit. <sighs> then, one evening, Rita had a surprise visitor. <gasps> Finally, what she'd always wanted. Look at that rabbit, doesn't it look cute? What a cutie little thing. Spike
client doesn't look very happy with me. But this little bunny wasn't quite what she'd expected. He didn't want to be stroked. He didn't want to be cuddled. And he wasn't very friendly. Ouch! What is he shooting? Carrots at Rita, that's not very friendly. And over there he's eating the bunny rabbit slippers. And over there he managed to break the table and is hanging from the curtain rail. Rita didn't know what to do. I mean, this room looks terrible. And what is the rabbit doing on the rug? Rita didn't know what to do until Spike spoke. Hiss! I really, really love the rabbit's facial expression here. <laughs> Hiding under the newspaper. Ah, what's going on? And good on Spike, finally. He's had enough. Suddenly there was a knock at the door. We just counted and we only have 4,289 rabbits. So we must have lost one. Have you seen him? Shy, fluffy little thing. Do you think that that rabbit is shy and fluffy little thing? Tinku, thank goodness you're safe. I really love the rabbit's facial expression here. He's just such a grumpy rabbit. <laughs> Oh, Spike, I thought rabbits were supposed to be friendly, fluffy and floppy, but that rabbit was frowny and fierce. Spike didn't have big floppy ears. Look, they're painted a bit, they're painting a bit of dragon and the rabbit paintings have gone. He didn't have a small fluffy tail. And he didn't have fabulously furry feet. He was scaly, scary, scratchy, scrabbly, scrawny, speckled and spiky. And Rita loved him. Now, can you just have a little look at her bedroom? So the carrots dangling have gone. Instead of having a rabbit toy, it looks like she's got a different kind of toy. What is it? And on her bed, she doesn't have carrots or rabbits. What design is her bed, the, the blanket or duvet cover on her bed now? And what are the drawings on her wall? They're not rabbits anymore, are they? And also, she's not wearing a red rabbit onesie. She's wearing a green outfit with a spiky tail and some different slippers. Do you prefer her bedroom now? Now that it's like a dragon themed bedroom or did you prefer the bunny rabbit bedroom? I think this one's really cool. Karen, I'm gonna stop sharing so that you can see, hopefully, me and Hannah. Hannah, are you there? Hi! I think I'm you're on mute. Here. <laughs> Hi! There we go. That was such a lovely reading. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I really would like to ask you about the rabbit with the musical instrument. Okay, well. What is that musical instrument? In my mind, when I was doing this, um, it was a carrot, because obviously there's lots of carrots in the books. Rabbits love carrots, and I thought, what else can you do with a carrot? If you're a rabbit with a hobby, a musical hobby. And um, I actually lived with someone who used to make instruments out of carrots. So it didn't just come from my imagination. <laughs> uh, I just think it was quite a funny, a funny hobby. And um, it was uh, fun to put in the book. You lived with someone who made instruments out of carrots? I did, I don't live with them anymore. Um, it wasn't because of the carrots, but that might have been a little a little part of why we went our separate ways. <laughs> and also, how did you come up with the idea for the bunny's bottom hanging off the back of the sofa? Because I really like that. 
I always try and put a bottom in <laughs> book that I illustrate. I think um, it's very funny. Sometimes <laughs> I can get away with it. Sometimes I'm told that's too many bottoms, Hannah. You need to take some of the bottoms. <laughs> but thankfully, everyone who worked on this book was very pleased with the bottom. And I think it's funny, isn't it? I love bottom. It's my son's favourite point in the book. Although <laughs> he, we've read it many times. Um, he refused to read it initially, which is, I was a bit offended by. But then he started, <laughs> and um, he always points out Spike's facial expressions and laughs to himself. It doesn't matter how many times we read it. I think you've done such a good job. How did you get? Um, how did you manage to do such amazing? bearded dragon expressions did you follow mm. bearded dragons did you go and hang out in pet shops or did you like pull facial expressions in the mirror <laughs> how did you do I, it i do quite a lot of the time with my drawings pull facial expressions in the mirror because it's especially what happens to spike he's shocked he's sad he's happy there's so many things going on and i think you really want to see what those expressions look like i think eyes are very important and i think you know, you can see it with the rabbit as well when he's hiding under that newspaper and his eyes are mm -hmm. big and he's so confused. And, you know, especially when drawing animals, their expressions are different to human faces. So I think you can get a lot expressed with uh, eyebrows and eyes, which we'll be moving on to in a bit shortly. And last question, um, mm. that birthday cake was enormous and that had like the candles were as tall as the cake How, get is that the sort of cake that you get in your birthday every year so when i was younger um my mum did used to make me very fancy birthday cakes every year which was so lovely of her i mean i don't get them anymore because i'm a little bit too old i think you're I never too old to get a fancy birthday cake hannah it just wouldn't fit in the post, I think, if my mum <laughs> was to carry on making them. Um, but this one, it's very tall. It's very, I wonder what flavours they are as well. I had a lot of fun thinking, you know, because in another life, I think I am a bit of a chef. So I was like, maybe there's some orange and chocolate flavours going on. Maybe some custard. I'm not sure if that's nice. But I think Rita's a person with very particular tastes. She knows what she wants. <laughs> so this birthday cake, she's probably said to granddad. I want this and this and this. And maybe it's carrot cake. She loves rabbits after all. I can't believe you think Rita has very particular taste. Maybe <laughs> all she really is particular about is having a rabbit, but maybe <laughs> she's particular about everything. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the book, she seems very happy with her lot, so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, speaking of rabbits, I had to draw quite a lot book not only Tinku the brown rabbit that makes an absolute mess of granddad's house but on this page that you said was one of your favorites we've got about 10 rabbits and I know that you said there was 4,289 rabbits <laughs> I didn't think that I could possibly I don't think they'd fit in the book if I actually drew 2,489 rabbits I thought that was <laughs> Exactly. And like we said, we've got the rabbit playing the instruments. We've got the gymnast rabbits. I really liked the idea that every rabbit had its own personality. And they're all going up to mischief. They're all wreaking havoc, essentially. So what I'd like to do is teach everyone who's watching maybe how to design their own rabbit. And we can think about the hobbies that the rabbit's doing, their interests. Do they like to play musical instruments? Maybe they're very into fashion and they're wearing a big hat um maybe they love to bounce very high maybe they sing you know there's so many different um ways to make a character interesting and unique and i think it would also be maybe fun to think about your ideal pet because obviously rita is so keen to have a rabbit um and then she ends up with spike and spike you know despite appearances is such a good match for rita so i think it would be nice to, to think about and draw your perfect pet. If we draw a rabbit and we think, how, what's the perfect rabbit for us? You know, does it have a hobby similar to us? Is it a chef? Is it gonna cook us some lovely food? Um, so I hope everyone's got 
maybe some colouring pencils, maybe some paper, whatever's near to you. We don't need any fancy materials here. Um, whatever you decide to use, I promise that what you end up with will look like a rabbit. So let's have a go, shall we? I'm going to um, be showing a video of how I've um, been drawing some of the rabbits for the book. And um, yeah, hopefully we've got all of our things and we can begin. So the best thing about drawing rabbits is that you there's no special way to do it. You can start with any shape you like. So here on the screen, we've got three different shapes. We've got a long kind of egg shape, a long oval. Then in the middle, there's a nice round one. At the end, almost sort of like a triangle. So you can have a go with a pencil, drawing whatever shape you'd like. Maybe your rabbit's going to be big and squishy and cuddly, or maybe they're going to be like a bean pole and they're going to be very skinny and they're going to jump through little things, I don't know. Draw your shape in pencil. And then all you need to do to turn it into your basic rabbit shape is add some ears, preferably at the top, I think. That's where rabbit's ears go, at the top of their head. And these ears can be long, they can be little short ones, and a little tail where you want their bottom to be. And um, that is going to be the basic outline for your rabbit. I think we've got Dinah drawing along. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm drawing. I don't know whether you can see this. Oh, <laughs> this is a huge. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing all, all the children's rabbits as well. Me too. Um, I'd love to see them. Yeah. Mm. It's really fun. Maybe I'll put them in the next book as well. Steal your, <laughs> steal your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant. So hopefully you've all got your outline of your rabbit. And next we're going to think about just refining those details and um, giving it a bit more fluff maybe around the edges. You can see I'm sort of slowly sketching. And then I've decided to make, I think sometimes when you want to make a character very funny, you can exaggerate certain features. So on this rabbit, I've made its ears so, so long with a little bit of fluff on top. I'm just gonna so, cut, hop off and get some pens. Oh, of course, yeah. Take your time, everyone. A lot of pens there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I like my, I like my coloring pens. Oh, lovely. It's going to be an orange rabbit, mine. Oh, orange, perfect. Okay. So once you've done the ears, you've done the fluff, I think we should draw a little face. Now, as I was saying earlier, eyes are such a good way to convey the character of your rabbit. So the one that I've drawn here, I think, I think in my head, he's going to maybe be a chef or really, he's going to be at the birthday, birthday party. I'm maybe going to do some crumbs around his mouth. He's a bit hyper from sugar. So I've drawn his eyes very big. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a slight, slightly mad look to him. So I think that's the character that I'm going for here. So you've got two eyes, a little V shape for the nose. Rabbits have a little V shaped nose, as you can see. And then in fact, I'm gonna just draw this and show you. Because I think apart from the ears and tail, the face can really show how to draw a rabbit so just like this that's its little nose and its little mouth and above the mouth you can draw three little dots for the whiskers to come out of so as you can see on the screen you've got the whiskers now it's time to add some legs so rabbits have very powerful legs for bouncing but when they're sitting down they're kind of folded up a bit so i've done a little rough sketch um, thanks, so I think you can probably keep going to be honest on the video um, because we might be getting to the colour point. Oh, and it's little arms as well. Rabbits have quite short arms, like little T-Rex arms. So now I'm picking some colours for my rabbit. I've just gone over the outline and I'm going to do him a nice sort of chocolatey brown, which I think is quite in keeping with um, the cake he's going to be eating, nice rich colours. So the great thing is you can be so scribbly when you're doing your rabbit. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can look however you want it to. And I think sometimes that can really help um, 
it look like fur if you're being a bit scribbly, you know? You don't have to draw every single hair one by one. You can be a bit messy. I think that's some of the fun of being an illustrator is that, you know, it's a mixture between being very neat and also being very messy. And I think this rabbit's quite a messy character. So there we go. We've got some color on his cheeks, his big fat cheeks. And I think another thing is I'm gonna add some pink into his ears and it's gonna be the same color as his cheeks just to keep everything nice and matching. Here's some little scribbly bits of fur I've drawn on as well. Dinah, how are you getting on? Oh, um, is, is eating too many carrots as mine? He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's being carroted. <laughs> too many carrots, a steady diet of carrots and you will go orange. You will. Carrot juice, carrot cake, they're all good for you. <laughs> too much though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you go orange. <laughs> so I think we can click play again, Laura, and it might show me colouring in the ears. Oh, I've given him a little bowl haircut as well, which I think is quite funny. And as I said earlier, he's a bit hyper off of his sugar. And I think I've drawn some splodges of chocolate around the bottom where he's being a bit messy. Now I'm going to add some icing around his face and some sprinkles on the ground just to really show what kind of rabbit he is. He's been a bit greedy, He's a bit hyper off of his sugar. And here's me just drawing a cake with all that chocolate icing at the bottom. Oh, we can stop the video now. Sorry. So there we have my very messy, my messy rabbit with his chocolate cake. And if we skip to the end of the video, Laura, there will be pictures of some more rabbits. This is me drawing another rabbit, <laughs> a jumping rabbit, but I'm afraid we don't have time for that. And here are some examples. I think we can pause. Perfect. Of some of the types of rabbits that I drew for the book. So as I said at the beginning, we have all the different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter at all. Um, we started off with the, the round rabbit, the middle rabbit, and then the very long triangle rabbit. And here, I've, uh, these are ones I've made earlier. I just changed them in to different types of rabbits. And the one on the left, I think is very, very pretty, very prim, maybe a little bit fussy. Long hair, long shiny coat. Of course, we have our, our friend, the, the messy eater. And then I think the one on the right, I'm not sure, Laura, what do you think his personality might be? Very enthusiastic! <laughs> He's got his little arms up. He's maybe, you know. Hello! <laughs> he wants a hug he wants to play he wants to join in i think he could probably jump very high as well yeah very athletic a, a, an olympic <laughs> rabbit an olympic rabbit of course yeah I think he could jump very very high so to everyone watching i would love to see some pictures of the rabbits that you've drawn um and their hobbies what they like doing if they're playing instruments what their accessories are what they're eating what they're doing I'd love to see. Diana, do we have a finished product from you? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, we've coloured him in. Oh, <laughs> I love his big ears. And there's his carrot. He's got one left. <laughs> oh, dear. That's lovely. It, we'd love to see the drawings the children have done. And, and if you want to send your drawings in, we can then share them with Hannah and Laura. Um, and you send them into. to... Um, this web this, um, email address, lal at kirklees.gov.uk. Um, and any of the drawings that you do, you've done of rabbits, we will share with Hannah and Laura. And perhaps you can pick, you know, one to win a copy of your book that we've got here. Mm. I can send them out a copy of the book. Yeah. That, I think. Yeah. I'd love to be a judge. <laughs> I'm sure they were brilliant. <laughs> It'll be very fun seeing them all and picking the winner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was super. That was really, really good fun. And shows how, how you know, anybody can have a go at drawing. Even me that, that hasn't drawn since I was very little has managed to draw my own little rabbit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, can we have a little look at how you did the other rabbits? Because I really, I really am curious about how you did the others. Mm, I think it might not be on the video. There is a video of me drawing a rabbit jumping, which might be interesting. So, so on this, where we can't, see, 
So what did I skip forward on this one? Can you hear me? Skipped forward me drawing a picture of a jumping rabbit, um, um, which I think was probably, I think it was in that video as a little sketch, but we can definitely can we have a look at it. Of course we can. Yeah, it might be going quite quickly, but you're... That's fine. I'll sl try and slow it down because as I was watching it, I was like, this is amazing. What is <laughs> this? <laughs> what? I didn't think we would have time for that, so I skipped ahead. But this is me drawing a jumping rabbit. So these are all the shapes I was trying out. You can see that I was building... Oh, wow! There we go, oh. yeah. It's so like a jumping rabbit. A hopping rabbit. Oh. <laughs> and it's flying ears all wavy with the wind, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Long building up ears. The like, yeah, a sort of different colour underneath and then a different colour for fur can be quite nice. There we go. It's also, I really love the top of the ears as well. That you don't use the outline. I think it looks really excellent to do the kind of block mm, colour and then nice. do the fur on top. Yeah, it's lovely. I love mm. how you can make your rabbits look quite mischievous because we yeah. do think of our rabbits as soft and cuddly, like, just like my rabbit here, Barney, who's really <laughs> cuddly and soft. But actually rabbits can be, they can get up to all sorts, can't they? They can yeah. be really different characters. Mm -hmm. This one looks a oh, bit wow. evil now with this oh, one. Wow. I love the eyebrow on this one. It looks like he's on. she's on a mission, maybe. <laughs> and then I think, oh, this is me drawing the other ones as well. Yeah, so just start with the shape. Me trying out different ears here. So to everyone watching, I do draw um, on an iPad, which means that I can sort of undo things and build them up. And it is a very different process from drawing on paper. But I also still really like to draw on paper. Um, but... I think if you see me undoing things and stuff like that, that's why I don't have a magical piece of paper or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, We've got a question come through for you, Hannah. Um, yeah. So, um, if I can just put it up about your drawing, um, I'll just bring it up um, for you um, from one of our watchers. Um, here we go. Uh, oh, no, that's not the one. Uh, you, Laura. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's here. Have you always been good at drawing, Hannah? Oh, that's so sweet. Um, I've always really liked drawing, and I don't know whether that's the same as being good at drawing, but I think when you really like something and you keep practising, you can get quite good. So I've got all sorts of silly little cartoons from when I was younger. I used to draw cartoons of my teachers when they front and I used to draw little naughty cartoons of them. <laughs> um, I used to draw houses a lot. I used to design um, houses for my hamsters, my little pets. So I've got notebooks full of those things. So I think I've just always really liked scribbling and was lucky enough to be able to make it into a job. But what I would say is that I've never always been as good as this. You know, these rabbits, I'm sure that if I was a younger person, the rabbits I was drawing would definitely not be like this. So it's really fun to to get better. But yeah. Not to always do lots, and lots of practice. Keep practicing. Lots of practice, but fun as well, you know, draw what you like, draw what's interesting, design houses for your hamsters, do whatever. Yeah. Do you have a sketchbook that you take with you when you're out and about all the time, Hannah, that you can Ooh, always that's a good question. I definitely always have something to draw on. Yeah, I do. Mm. Most I just scribble down ideas, anything that comes to my mind. Sometimes you know, it's not always like a fully formed picture. It would just be, and also I think taking pictures of things I love to do if I'm in a museum and I see something really interesting, something that, will, you know, inspires me or I want to sort of redraw a bit of it. I think that's always really nice. So yeah, exactly. Looking around and seeing what's around you is such good uh, inspiration for, for what you're interested in and what you want to draw. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. We've got a couple more questions. Are you all right for questions, Laura and Hannah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Shall I no. stop sharing or shall I show the end of this little last uh, rabbit and stop sharing or do you want to keep this on the big screen? I tell you, shall we bring us all up big again? Yeah. There so we go. Um, here's a question. Where did the name Rita come from? 
Well, that's a clever question. It was originally called Roxy's Rabbit, and I named it after a friend's child. And I liked the alliteration of Roxy and Rabbit. So alliteration is when two words start with the same sound, R R Roxy's Rabbit. But I didn't think Roxy's Rabbit was strong enough. And even though I really wanted to like make my friend happy by naming it after her, her daughter, I, I, I write a lot of poetry. So I think very carefully about words and letters. Mm -hmm. So I went through um, a list of every name beginning with R in the entire universe. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I liked Rita because Rita actually is made up of letters that are in the word rabbit. And also, I think that the each word in, in poetry like terms has a meter, sort of like a rhythm. And so the, the word rabbit is like rabbit, rabbit. And so if I would called it Raoul the rabbit, then you lose the t in the middle, which is quite nice, but you would still sort of have a similar meter. But with Rita, it's Rita's rabbit, and so you've got that nice da 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 da. Yeah. And I thought that, that sounded quite really nice. And then you've got the echo of all the different sounds. And as it happens, I do have um, a friend with a daughter called Rita. So that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so then I went to my other friend and was like, look, I wrote this after your daughter's name. Yeah. But uh, I never actually told that person that it was technically named after Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, okay. Oh, <laughs> and where did the inspiration come for for the story, um, Laura? Where did you, you know, did you just think of it one day, or was it lots of ideas that you'd had over a period of time? I'd been really wanting something. I can't even remember what the thing was, but I've been really wanting it for ages, and like. This is an impression of me wanting it. And so this had carried on for some time and it was a bit tiring. And then something happened where I was like, oh, actually, why did I waste all that time wanting it? I didn't want it. And this other thing I've got is much better. Oh. Mm. So I, I remembered this moment and I thought, I'd like to write a picture book about it. Mm. And then I went to a party where I didn't know anyone. And there was a lady wearing a sequined onesie, so like an all-in-one sequined outfit. And I thought this was like the best outfit I'd ever seen. So I went up to her um, and said, I'm sorry, I don't know you, but I just need to tell you that I think your sequined outfit is the best thing I've ever seen. And then we spoke for three hours and she told me about her reptile collection. And she had like every kind of reptile you could ever imagine. And she was, I mean, I feel like she could have been uh, like a, a, a specialist in the zoo reptile section she knew so much about these creatures and she taught me all about everything about all of them and I decided the bearded dragon was the coolest of all of them and I at the end of the three hour conversation said I promise you I'm going to write a picture book about a bearded dragon and then I went home and like really started researching bearded dragons mm -hmm. um and quite liked the idea of First of all, combining the idea that we like it's, it's so easy to want something that actually won't make you that happy or to become mm -hmm. obsessed with the thing that you want. And then also, as well as that, it's so easy to think something like a little fluffy rabbit is going to be a particular way mm -hmm. when actually things aren't always as they seem. Um, and so I wanted to kind of combine those two things. And I think that the thing about picture books that is so excellent is that in a, in a picture book with not very many words, you can try and distill something that's quite big and important about life that affects everyone of all ages. Mm. So I'm sure that the parents or librarians or teachers or caregivers that are reading Rita's Rabbit and other picture books, half the time are learning just as much from the picture books as the children themselves. And also you get to read the books on repeat. So I will be reading it to my son. I wrote the book. I've read it four bazillion times. And I'll read it and go, oh yes, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> How yes. wine you were when you wrote this. And now you are in the middle of wanting something desperately. <laughs> and so it's like it's quite a useful reminder. Um 
Yeah, I think as humans, it's so easy to want things. And half the time, it's just a waste of time. Yeah, absolutely. When it's right there where you've got it, isn't it? Sometimes mm -hmm. what you want is not what you want. It's actually there at that moment in time. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, another question's come up here. Um, <laughs> did you ever go to a library when you were little girls? This is from one of our other librarians. So, did you used to go to a library when you were little girls, Hannah and Laura? I did, yes. I remember there was a library called the Discovery Centre, really close to where I lived. And at the beginning of the summer holidays, mum would take us there and she'd make us pick as many books as would keep us busy for six weeks. <laughs> she wanted us to just entertain ourselves for the summer holidays. And I remember... I think, I don't know if it still happens, Dinah, but there was a reading challenge every summer holiday. Yes, you yeah. A list and, you, and you ticked off all the ones that you'd read. And I think there was a lot of competition between me and my sisters to see who could read the most books. Um, so, yeah, I loved the library. It was so fun. And I read so many uh, kids books that I otherwise, yeah, wouldn't have found out about. And, yeah, authors like Eva Ibbotson, you know, I'm sure it's still it's in the library today. And I absolutely loved it finding out all those authors yeah what about you thank Laura? you my grandma i have quite vivid memories of going to the library but my grandma told me that my so i grew up with my mum and grandparents and my grandma told me a few years ago that my mum took me to the library every day after school and then every day in the summer holidays and this was not some I mean I remember going there a lot but I did not remember going every day I mean I could still like they've annoyingly for me changed the library <laughs> because in my memory I've got the entire like the stairs here and the children's section there and the you know the desk there um and it got to the point where and I don't remember any of this uh the librarian would say like they they did those reading reward things and the librarian would go you haven't you haven't read all those books and then i'd go i have and <laughs> say, okay well then what happened in them and then i'd tell her what had happened in them and then she would have to give me the the stickers because i'd read them and so i was like a librarian junkie i think um yeah. and also i used them when i was older i used the mobile library um, oh, yeah. all the time like when i was a teen um and i i couldn't like my mum didn't take me every day anymore, but she did when I was little. Then I just went to the mobile library every time it came and like, and it stopped like a two minute, two minutes away from my home. So I think the library was like pretty fundamental to my life actually. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, did you go to the library? It feels like actually like I spent most of my time in a library being a pest to the librarians <laughs> demanding my stickers and arguing with them about the fact that i had read the books <laughs> <laughs> and ordering books and demanding more so i was probably like one of those really annoying children are there annoying children at libraries or are they all amazing you're like all children you welcome all of them right we we welcome all children it's 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 we have such fun the children and there's no when i was a little girl going to the library you had to be shh, you had to be really, mm. really um we encourage the children to to make some noise <laughs> with, yeah to sing and to talk about the books and yeah so it's not like when i was a little girl when i had when i went i was i was frightened of going to the library i i i used to take lots of books home like you we used to go every week but now our libraries are, are very friendly and then you can come and make it. We even have concerts at our libraries. Wow. Um, we have something called Get It Loud in libraries. So That's amazing. Yeah, yeah so we have lots of story times and, and rhyme times. Um, yeah, so they're the really fun places to be and to work. Um, there's another question come up um, before, because I don't want to run out of time, but um, have you got any plans for any more books, Laura and, and Hannah? Laura? I, um, yes, I have got um, two non-fiction books. One is about um, traveling around the world through festivals, which is written with 
I don't think I can tell you anymore. It's a bit secret, yeah. but it's I've written it. It's just being illustrated. Um, sadly, not by Hannah. I, I, whenever I write any book, I ask them <laughs> for Hannah. <laughs> with Hannah. Uh, and then another book, another nonfiction book um, that travels the world through food, and then um, a picture book that's coming out. Um, but it's, it's. I mean, all of these are going to take a while. So my, my children's books I think you've got to wait um like two years for annoyingly but Hannah I think has some more exciting like I do thank you I actually I promise I didn't do this on purpose I am just by my bookshelf <laughs> but um I have a new book out um called Kate on the case that I've illustrated and written so it's full of well you can't see but lots of nice pictures and words for maybe um, people who are just starting to read by themselves. Um, so it's one of three books and I'm really excited. It's the first one that I've written. I've done quite a lot of illustrated books, um, but it's really nice to do the words and the pictures at the same time. I think you can really um, build a world and it can be mm -hmm. so immersive, um, not only for me, but hopefully for the readers as well. Um, so yeah, over the, I think the, so book one's just come out, book two will be out early next year and then there will be a third one as well maybe more I don't know yet but three for now <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm glad that you both are because I absolutely well and how old you, you, I was off stream wasn't I while you were reading Rita's Rabbit but I was I was laughing out loud honestly <laughs> so funny so so funny and the illustrations I just wanted to show you this one that I don't know you pointed. I love this rabbit here. He's sort of like really cowling because you can't believe what's happening. So it's just hilarious. It's a really, really good fun book. Um, and I'm going to be reading it lots in story times at libraries um, from mm. now on. I'm really going to be sharing it. Um, it's, it's super. I love that story. It's great. So we want to see more of you both. Rita's Rabbit 2, please. Laura. Yes! Absolutely! <laughs> you like yeah. Spike's Adventures, little pre Yeah, <laughs> that would be really good. You know, the adventures, what's, what happens to Spike, maybe, hmm, afterwards? All the rabbits, the mischievous rabbits. What yeah. Do? yeah, yeah. Or Tinku. I feel like Tinku has the capacity to create chaos in many, many more homes. Oh, oh completely. <laughs> <laughs> but I also I really love Rita I just really like empathize mm. with Rita and I think sometimes adults can get a bit grumpy with children when they're being ungrateful but actually sometimes adults feel exactly the same they're just not saying it because they've learned not to say it and children are just being really honest mm. and so I quite, I quite like Rita and the and the honesty of children generally um mm. oh I should say also I don't know, Hannah, I think you've got other books out now. I've also got two poetry books um, mm. you could start reading like once you were sort of five or six plus. So you, there are things you can read now. You don't mm. have to wait two years. That's quite a long time to read. Do you have books out now, Hannah, other than the, Peter? Yeah, so there's the, obviously the first of the Kate books. Um, there's a book called Green. I don't have it on me right now, um, but it's by Louisa Gregg and myself. And it's um, a story about, it's actually kind of similar to Rita in that it's about a boy who um, wants the biggest sled. It's winter time, um, all of his friends are going sledding and he wants the sort of biggest and best one. He spends all of his time building it over the winter. And let's just say things start to become greener <laughs> um, as the snow melts and his sled, he might have the biggest and best sled, but what's he gonna do with it? So that was really fun. I got to draw lots of, sleds and winter coats and winter hats and you know maybe as the weather changes it'll be a nice read for those like cozier evenings and i love louise greg she's a poet yeah so she's brilliant. Brilliant. yeah she's amazing yeah i've just remembered the story about wanting something when i was a little girl and um, i really really wanted um, a cindy doll caravan um, I'd seen this Cindy doll caravan and I'd put it on my Santa list yeah. um, and I didn't get the Cindy caravan that I wanted. I got a wooden one. I got a, a really um, 
a, a wooden Sydney caravan that um, I got for my birthday that my dad made and I was very disappointed. But my friend who got the plastic Cindy um, caravan from Father Christmas, it broke quite quickly. But mine lasted years. So it's just a message around, you know, sometimes don't always get what you want, but then it turns out that it's for the better. <laughs> mm, definitely. I can't believe it broke so quickly. Oh, that's disappointing, but great for you. Yeah. <laughs> did you at that point feel quite smug? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. My my Cindy caravan lasted the length of time, but yeah. Yeah. So mine's really good. like a real caravan. I didn't. I would like a real caravan. Oh, yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, to take on holiday and read lots of books. <laughs> Mm, oh. a little library section in there. Well, or don't play the books and just do a tour of the country's libraries. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, before we do go, because we, we're, we're nearly out of time, um, we always ask one particular question to our guest authors before they go. And I know we've had a few questions up to now. But this, this particular question has been asked at every Library Adventures Live, and we've done them for a year now. We've, we've, had, we've had our first mm -hmm. birthday. Um, so if we could ask, I know I've thrown you both on the spot, but the question <laughs> is, if you were a biscuit, <laughs> what biscuit would you be? So, girls and boys out there, let's find out what Hannah and Laura would be if they were a biscuit. I'm thinking so hard. The first thing that comes There's a biscuit mind. that I'd like to be, and then the biscuit that I probably am, and I feel like they might be slightly different. Okay, who's going to go first, Hannah or Laura? I think I would say I'm a custard cream. It's classic, but it does split opinion as well, you know? I think the people mm -hmm. who love them really, really love them. They're also not for everyone, but they're also my favourite biscuit. And I love custard, it's so versatile. <laughs> it's a great answer, that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this Laura? is a really difficult question because I don't really eat biscuits. Oh. So I don't have like an encyclopedic knowledge of my options. Mm. So the first one that came to mind weirdly is a Jaffa cake. I don't even know if that's a biscuit because it's called a cake, but also I don't like them. So why <laughs> would I say I'm a Jaffa cake? I say about you? Oh, so probably um maybe a hobnob because I really like them. It's the only biscuit I like, but I still don't really eat them. This is terrible. No, 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 no. Can we extend the question to say, if you were a sweet item, what sweet yeah. item would we you We can eat? bring that new question on for those that don't like biscuits. That's a <laughs> great question. <laughs> so, um, what sweet would you be? Uh, well, if it's a sweet thing and that includes like all forms of pudding, then I'd probably be a pavlova um, because I really like the crunch and the smooth and then all the fruit. Oh, the but excitement, yeah. I feel yeah. like I feel like I I've I feel like I've done really badly on this question. I apologize. And after this, yeah. I'm gonna go and research. I'm gonna get a book out from the library about biscuits and read about them. <laughs> I like the fact you mentioned fruit because um, after meeting you both, um, Laura, you're very colourful and very fruity and, and very zesty. So maybe that's why you're a pavlova. <laughs> well, maybe also why I thought Jaffa cake. <laughs> and that's the Jaffa cake has lots of layers. So each layer you get um, um, a surprise. Is Jaffa, mm. is Jaffa cake a biscuit? We'll say it is. Yeah, for argument's sake, yeah. <laughs> this was this has been very stressful for me. I feel like I need to go and research some biscuits. Go to the library. Girls and boys, we've got lots of books, cooking books, bakery books on biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the about the personalities of biscuits. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> We're coming to the end of our show, and I really, it's flown by so quick. It, we've, we've hopped through. Oh, <laughs> we've read rabbit and lots of drawing. Um, 
And it's just really, um, before we go and say goodbye, a reminder to everybody about um, your rabbit drawings. So if you've been drawing rabbits along yeah. with Laura and Hannah, um, and or if you haven't and you want to, watch this Library Adventures Live again and send your drawings to, if I find the banner, this is always the hard bit, um, library adventures live kirklees.gov.uk that's lal at kirklees.gov.uk and hannah and laura it's okay we'll share those pictures with you and you can i'd love to see them yeah no, and we'll make a book yeah hannah, let's do it absolutely yeah <laughs> But oh. we might steal your ideas, so you may not. <laughs> you may want to keep them for a bit of your own. <laughs> oh, so before we go, is there anything else you'd like to say um, about Rita's Rabbit and today's session? Thank you, for, thank you for asking us, and oh. thank you for having us. It's really Completely. kind, and like we love libraries, and so it's a real privilege for us to be able to to do an event with libraries absolutely yeah yeah we, we've loved having you we've got to meet some fantastic authors and illustrators just like yourselves from from around the country mm. you know because to hop over to yorkshire is a bit of a trek but we can <laughs> hop but over what, then? <laughs> and linda oh she's oh, on linda, you. linda Let's unmute you. Hi, Linda. Will you be able to tell us about next week before you go? I will. I will. I'll tell you all about next week. So, Laura and Hannah, um, I don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, goodbye from me. Goodbye from Barney, my bye rabbit. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. And, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Um, and I'll hopefully see you again soon with your new books. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, weren't they brilliant? And the story, Rita's Rabbit. Remember, you can get this book from our libraries. Um, Rita's Rabbit by Laura Mutcher and Hannah Peck. That was fantastic. I've had so much fun. Before we go, um, I just want to show you um, who's coming up next week. So next week we have an exciting Library Adventures Live on the 10th of August at 11 o'clock with Darren Simpson and his latest book, The Memory Thieves. This book is aimed at age 9 to 12 year olds and here is Darren all going to tell us all about it. Hi there everyone, my name is Darren Simpson and I write slightly sinister mystery adventure stories for older children and so far I've written this book, Scavengers, and also this, The Memory Thieves, which comes out on the 5th of August and on the 10th of August at 11am I'll be pleased as punch to join Kirkby's Libraries for a Library Adventures live session in which I'll be talking about how The Memory Thieves was inspired. And to give you a summary, it's about this place called the Elsewhere Sanctuary, where lots of children, including Cyan and Ruby here, have gone to have bad memories of their old lives removed. But Cyan finds a warning carved into some whale bones that something is amiss at the sanctuary, something bad is happening there. And the book is about his secret mission to find out what's going on and to find out about himself. So I'll be talking about how this book was inspired, taking your questions and also joining you for a design your own dream island uh, activity. So yes, it should be lots of fun and I hope to see you there. Bye. Hi there, everyone. Whoops. <laughs> that was Darren telling us about next week. So from me, all I need to say now is goodbye and have a fantastic week. And we'll see you next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Bye for now. Bye.